Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic for our second video today. Now this is a, a very interesting looking one and I think Simon's already done a recommendation from the Discord server today and I'm doing another. So this one is a um, an odd pentomino puzzle by Dying Flutchman. Now slightly complicated rule set, do check on the description field below the video if you want to clarify, but I'm going to canter through the rules now. We've got normal Sudoku rules, we've got X sum rules, which mean that this 10 counts the first X cells in this direction where X is the first cell it sees. So if that was a 3, then it 3, 2, 5 is possible to add up to 10. Now we have to tile the grid with the 12 pentominoes. So we've got a reference grid of those and there are a couple of rules. First of all, we've got a few little boundaries already marked that we have to obey. We've also got to place each pentomino so that it crosses a three by three box boundary. So these three by three boxes are all bounded by slightly thicker lines. Each pentomino we place has to cross one. And now the really interesting thing for the numbers part is that each tetromino has to add up to an even number and mustn't contain repeated digits. And each pentomino has to add up to an odd number and mustn't contain any repeated digits. So really respecting the parity of the shapes. It's a lovely idea. I even love the fact that 12 pentominoes is 60 cells, 5 tetrominoes is 80, that's all the ones there are, and then there's just one cell left over for this lonely little, what is it, a monomino. Do, 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 do. Um, so that goes there. Brilliant, a lovely idea. So do have a try on the link below the video because uh, I think this looks really fascinating, but I'm going to give it a go now. So let's get cracking. Um, I would normally look at the X sums first, but this shape's very clearly appealing. Those four cells, for this cell to get out, it has to go through those three, and then it has to cross the boundary. So bam, that is one of our shapes straight away, an L. And we've used the L, which is interesting. So this one has to use those three to get out of the corner. Um, now, it can't be the V shape because that wouldn't cross the box boundary. Ah, oh, and it can't come down here like that because that would block in a cell. So it has to get there and it can't be the L because we've used that. So this is the Y, another useful shape. I'm gonna use blue again. Let's go down to the next corner because the corners are useful. Now this could come up there, it can't be the L, so it could be the Y, or it could go straight across. Again, can't be the L, can't go up earlier because it would block in too few. So Y or I there, what about this one? Well again, I is possible. Oh no, Y is not possible because we've just placed the stinking Y. So this has to be the I. Now this can't be the eye. The only other shape that can reach from a corner and cross a box boundary is N. So this has to go like that. Let's make that blue. And all the long shapes are placed into the far corners, which are clearly very helpful cells. And now look, we get two other shapes immediately. Let's put one in there. Um, let's go red, why not? And one in there. V and U placed. Um, now, what else have we got? We've got one coming out here. We've got one coming out here. Uh, I don't know what colors to start using now. Purple there. Now, th this one has to be the egress for both that cell and that cell. So they're all together. Let's go green there because it probably won't reach this green one. Now it's got to cross the box boundary, this one. So it can either do that there, can't be a Y, we've used that, can't be an F, it would block in that. So it can be an X, which is looking very appealing. But actually it could cross it there. Then this one could get out there. Okay, don't know. This one don't know. It's definitely going to cross a box boundary. 
This one has, oh, it's already done it, the purple one. Okay, what about the this block of two by two? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Now, how could this block of two by two be parts of two pentominoes? Only if one of them either came up from the bottom there with the other one beside it, and we've used I and L, that's just obvious nonsense. But one of them alternatively could just use one of these cells, in which case the other would have to curl around like that and either become an L or a U, and then we've used those. So no, they, these must be connected. Let's make it P for purple, because this is part of the P, and it either goes there or there, but I don't know which. So how are we going to decide the rest? What haven't we used? T, Z, W, X, which could well be there, F. I suppose we've got three lots of these um, new uh, gallows shapes beginning. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, oh, well, none of those can be T. They could all be the other shapes, but they can't be T. Where does T go? Clearly it could go there. This would have to be the Z, that would have to be X, that would use up these. Then this could be the W, then you could fit the F in, that's possible. Where else could T go without blocking in a small amount? Like there or there it blocks in cells, that here. That's possible because the P needs an extra cell down here. Um, now that would make this the X with an F there. Oh, okay, yes, the way to look at this is... <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. How are you going to get a Z in? The, um, the, the one that's a bit like a T but with a different ending. How are you going to get a Z into the grid if you put a T there? Well, it looks like, well, there's a couple of places. You can either put it there or there. Sorry, let me show that that Z is possible if this T's in, or that Z. But in fact, either of those Z's would force the other, which is impossible. You can't have two. So that T is not possible for a brilliant reason. I mean, there may be other reasons why it's not possible, but I like that one. Let's make T yellow and put it there, because we now know it's there. So the purple comes out here. Can't be a U, because we've used that. So that cell's green. This cell has to be green. This cell has to be purple. They've all obeyed the constraints. Um, and we've got a W, F to place, as well as finishing off the P. So this is the W, the green shape. F must be like that to allow the P to finish off. So there we go. We've tiled the grid. That's lovely. I've enjoyed this puzzle already. I haven't placed a number or thought about one yet. So let us look at the X sum clues. Eight begins with either two or three. If it's a two, it's two, six. If it's a three, it's three, one, four. Twelve can't begin with a 2, so it's either 3 or 4, can't be higher than that. 6 is 2 or th it can be 3, if it was 3, 2, 1, say. 36 can be 8, because there's 9 left over out of 45, the sum of 1 to 9. Could be 7, could be 6. Can't be 5. Um, ah, this works for both 10 and 12, so again, Three or four, just like down here for 12. Ah, I was going to... Okay, first of all, I was going to say it could work for 10 as a four, but in fact, you can't have one, two, three there because there's two or three there. But actually, the simpler way of looking at it, I've just noticed, is there's a three, four pair. So that makes this one a two, which definitely rules out this being a four because it would need one, two, three. So three there, four here. We can finish off this 6 with a 4. That, that sum's done. Now, 10 in 3 cells. We need 7 more. And we can't use 3, 4 or 2, 5. So it's 1, 6. 
This is 12 in three cells, so these add up to nine. So they're either two, seven, or four, five. Can't be that way round as five, four because of this four. Now, down here though, they add up to 12, including a four. So that's got to be one, two, four, five. Excellent. Well, we can place the two. We can finish off the eight clue with a six. That two comes out of this cell. Still got two possibilities up here though. Okay, let's finally go across to the left side. 20 or 17, three is possible. No, hang on, three is interesting. Oh, three's been, three's gone, three's not possible. I just worked out that it couldn't be three in its own right, but three's gone. Four seems very likely. Could it be five? Actually, look, if that was five cells adding to 20, with three cells there adding to 12, 32, this would have to be a 13 to make up the 45 total. Oh, sorry about that. I can't stop that noise, I'm afraid, so... No, maybe I can. Hang on a second. Okay, sorry about the noise. I think I have got it stopped for a little while. Right, so where were we? We were looking at this... 20 and 17. It can't begin with 3. It could begin with 4 or... F I mean, we worked out it can't begin with 5 because of that sum. So it is a 4. Yes, I was going to say, things you learn on Cracking the Cryptic, you can't put 13 in one cell of a Sudoku. Now, 17. Yes, that works. 21. Can't be a 3 because that would need two nines. So it's 5 or a 6. 7 always begins with a 2 or a 3. 34, well, there's 11 outside it, so 7 is possible, or 6. Can't be 5, actually, because at 5 digits adding up to 34 would have to be 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, which don't include the 5. Now, 29 could be 4, no, 5, yes. Six, yes. Seven, I was going to say yes, but the outies at the top would have to be nine and seven, and that would be impossible if we'd put a seven here. Ah, and we've got a one five pair looking at that. Six there, seven there. Oh, that's really nice. Um, so now, what can we eliminate down? We've got a six looking at that cell. Um, Mm. Now, oh yes, we've got a four looking at that cell. So that's a two. This is seven. Three, two, seven, one, six. So four by some regular Sudokus in one of those. Uh, oh, I don't know. Okay. Ah, these four add up to 20. Yes, the, let's remember the parity rule. So those four add up to 20. The blue L has to be an odd number in total. So this must be a five. Uh, let's use the right mode. Let us use the right cell, and then we get a five in there. Um, does, it doesn't help to... Turn. Oh, yes, it does. These add up to 20, these add up to 12. So these two add up to 13. Now that does work in Sudoku. Five and eight. Well, five, eight, two, seven, three. So one, six, nine in that group. Hmm. Okay, what about this shape? It's a four cell shape, so it adds up to an even number. Nine, this has to be five, eight, or nine. Not five, that's, you can see a five as well as all the others. Ah, oh, one of those is an eight and the other one is odd. But I don't know which way around. Now along the bottom we've got three, eight and nine to go in. Oh, it's very difficult to use this parity rule already. You need kind of most of a shape filled in, even this one. 
10 filled in, so these two are odd between them, but it doesn't really help know what they are. Oh, it's tricky now. How do you keep going? Oh, right. These, is that helpful? These five add up to 21. And they've got a five in. Oh, look, these add up to 17, these four, sorry. Nine plus eight, can't be five, three, it has to be six, two. Ah, the six is ruled out of those. Okay, this isn't that hard if you actually look at the information you've got. The six sorts out this pair. One, six, the five must be down in one of those cells now. Um, seven, six. Right, this lot has to add up to an even number. We've got eight already. These two have to add up to an even number. And they can't be two even numbers because we've used two, four, and six. So they're two odd numbers. Mm. But that means eight has to be down here somewhere. Uh, that's not the type of eight I meant to mark. I meant to mark an eight in one of those. Ooh, it's not that helpful. Oh, the seven clue, I can complete that with a five. Puts a five in one of these two cells. Four, one, nine, five, six. Ah, now the parity of these, I must be able to deduce. They have to be odd. So they could, for instance, be two well, they will be two and eight and an odd number. Um, and that must be the other odd number, three or seven. Must be, yeah. So two and eight are in there. I don't know how they break down. So how do you keep going? I must be missing something from the X sums. Oh yeah, the either this is an eight Oh, of course, this last single cell. We know it's parity. Oh, that's brilliant. We know it's parity because the whole grid adds up to 405. Nine, nine lots of 45 has to be an odd number. That's the point. Now, 12 pentominoes add up to 60 cells. Well, sorry, because there are 12 of them, the total of all of those must be even. Four tetrominoes, because they're tetrominoes, the total of them must be even. This must be odd. That's beautiful, because not just because it's a lovely way of having to deduce that, but because it's even the right parity for its shape size. So eight, five, and nine go in there. Um, right, do we know about this one? Not really, because they're uncertain, so we can't determine the parity there. Ah, this can't be five. So five in the columns in one of these, this can't be five, we can place a one. So one must be in one of these cells. And six, two, four, five. Seven must be in one of these two. Um, seven, six, seven must be in one of these two. Ah, that's quite interesting because now seven must be in one of these two and we know which one. So we can put a seven in there. Now two and eight are in those. I worked that out earlier. I'm going to sort of pencil mark them in the middle, but I don't know whether they go with a seven or a three, annoyingly. No, maybe not in the middle. That's not what I do. Put them in the corner. Um, seven, six. Ah, oh, right. Now I'd forgotten again the X sum clue that I haven't finished here. What can these add up to? 21, 27. These must add up to 18. Oh, that's not very helpful. Oh, and what am I missing here? One, two, three, four, 
6243 is in one of those. That's not interesting. These three must add up to, they've got one eight and two odd numbers, so they're even. So these two are odd, which means they include one odd number and one even number. That doesn't get me anywhere. Mm. One of those being eight. It's not that useful. Right, 36, so it's got nine at the end. So I, oh, and it's a seven. I know it's a seven. Why don't I use the clues I get? These two add up to nine. So they're either one eight or three six. This is not a nine. These are eight and nine and either one or three, five. Oh, is that all I'm getting there? Eight, 15. Are there any other X sum clues I think I've used and I haven't? Yes, there are. Oh God, pay attention. Right, this 34 clue, seven, the last two must add up to 11. Right, we can do that now, they're nine and two. And look here, six, so these last three add up to 16. Um, we've from, well, that's a one. This must be seven and eight, and we can place the three there. Now, what have we got in the shapes? That one works. Um, right, now we worked out these two were odd together. So one of them is a one, and the other is an even number which isn't all that interesting, except that it means this is either four or eight. Now these two are 13, that's odd. Plus even is still odd. So these two have to add up to even between them. No, I don't know how to use that at the moment. So I've used the 29 and 34 finally. Ah, right, now this 21. 5, 12, 14, these add up to seven. They've got to be three and four. That fixes the four over here. Goodness, that took me a while. Sorry about that. So four and five, this is an eight, nine pair now. That is not a four, right. So this is a one to finish the row. We've got a two, seven, nine triple here. Oh, look at that. Look at this. Where does seven go in row four? Got to be in one of those three, but there's a seven in the shape already. So seven goes there and that fixes the seven in the next row up because again, it can't be in the purple shape. That's lovely. Oh, I really like that. Um, ah, now those are either eight and five or eight and nine because they have to be odd. So that must mean the same for those. They're odd, plus eight, which is even, still odd. This has to be even. Wow, that was slightly complicated, but anyway. Four there, three there. This can't be three. Ah, oh, still got the possibilities, so that didn't resolve it. One, seven, eight. One of these is an eight. Don't know which one. Oh, hang on. No, thought I could determine the parity of this shape, but that is not the case yet. Um, this one, no. Yeah, we still don't know how those five, eight, and eight, nine break down, as far as I can see. 10, that's not very helpful. We need more information. Oh, I tell you what, we have got, no, we could compare that cell and that cell by looking at the total parity of this pair of boxes but we'd only find out that this was odd or even I don't think that would help um, two is in one of those cells in the central box four look at that four four must be in one of those two cells so four is in one of those two likely to be there I feel three eight nine no it could be one eight nine here um, but they are, we've done this before. This is an odd and an even. Yeah, we know that, but it's not actually sorting it out. One, six, two, four, seven, five, eight, nine, three. 
Ah, oh, that five, right, okay. That has been resolving this eight five for a long time. Sorry if you were scanning down the column while I wasn't earlier, but I finally got there. Seven, nine, five, four, six, two. So one of those is a one. These are from one, three, and eight. Two, eight, four, one. So one of those is seven. One of these two is a five. Um, ah, oh, that can't be a one. I don't know though whether this is one and eight or one and three, which are different parity wise. Five there. Oh, and two here as well as five. So now that's interesting. That's seven. These two must add up to an odd number. Mm, doesn't help yet. But in this column, that's three, four, nine. So one is here. One is here. Oh, one is there. One is here. Now this has to be even, if I remember correctly. Yes, yeah, six or eight. So we can place the four in the column. Um, four is in one of those two cells in row seven. Three, four, nine. That one can't be a four. Ah, three, four, nine here. So they are even plus even. This must be odd. Five or nine. Can't be nine because it's already in the shape. That's a five. We can place five there. Get rid of that. Six is in one of these two cells. Still no word on that parity yet. Two, five, seven. This can't be a one. Ah, so we can place the one in the column here. Let's get rid of the pencil mark. Those two remain stubbornly parity separate. Seven is in one of, ah, oh, seven there, seven there. Seven is in one of these two, but one of them's already got a seven in its shape. That places that and that and that. Get rid of that, right. We've got nine in a tetromino. So these two make an odd number and they've got to include three and an even number. So they are three and eight which gets rid of eight from here, makes this eight. That's three. Now we are cooking finely with a little bit of gas. Six and nine there, we can place this three and eight actually. Um, four, five, six, this is a naked single. That's the kind of help I like. Three or eight here as well. Let's just get rid of the pencil marks there because they're silly. Right, let's fix this pair as a five and nine. That's fixed two and five. That puts a six here. Where's four going to go in column four? Right there. That places four. That's probably all the fours done in the puzzle. Seven, six, four. Um, I saw some shape. Yes, this one, 14. This has to be even. It's got to be eight. Lovely, that fixes this, that fixes this. Column four's finished. This six, eight pairs disambiguated. Is this one right? 10, 21, 27, it adds up to a good number. Um, ah, this one, 10, 16 already in the Z, plus something odd. Three or nine, can't tell which, but it gives me a three nine pair, which makes that a six. Now this cage is 14 plus an odd number, which is what it had to be for the box anyway. Three here, two here, six here, nine here, two here. That's a nine. Oh yes, what a puzzle. I love this puzzle, just in case you hadn't work that out already. I am a big fan. Eight and three to place here. This is not, of course, a deadly pattern with that three eight because this one can't have a three in and needs an even number for the cage. So every possible reason to disambiguate those. What a brilliant puzzle. That is just fun all the way. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you tried the puzzle because that's lovely. 
a tiling pattern and a, and a beautifully ruled Sudoku as well. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.